Welcome! This presentation was developed by Martha Schwer and Jennifer Lewis. The goal of this presentation is to define the role of cognition and learning to help you determine the most appropriate instructional strategies for your online learners. The information in this presentation draws on presentations from the 2012 conference on distance education held in Madison, Wisconsin. This presentation will describe the learning theories behaviorism, cognitivism, constructivism, and connectivism. The goal of this presentation is to help you select the best learning theory for designing the structure and the learning activities in your online course. Learning is a complex process involving mental processes that are influenced by emotional and environmental factors which can support or hinder learning. Learning theories have evolved over time to take into consideration these complex factors in an effort to explain how learning occurs and to prescribe instructional strategies to facilitate learning. Behaviorism was dominant from the early 20th century through the 1950s and 60s. Cognitivism grew in popularity in the 1960s and 70s. Here at Madison, Dave Apple came to campus in the 80s to spread information about constructivist methods. And most recently, constructivism emerged as a prominent theory of learning, influencing the active learning classrooms we're installing today. Connectivism is the new kid on the block. It's most closely associated with online learning. And it's also the least widely known here at the college. So as you go through this presentation and listen to information on the various formats, keep in mind that there's no best theory. Some learning theories can be more or less useful to your content area. So we're going to take a look at each of these individually, starting with behaviorism. Behaviorism is grounded in the study of observable behavior, physical skills, and does not take into consideration the functions of the mind. According to behaviorism, knowledge exists outside of a person and is gained through behavior modification. The theory views learning as a change in behavior that can be conditioned using positive and negative reinforcements such as rewards and punishment. Behaviorism considers learners more passive in the learning process. The learner's role is simply to respond to the learning content provided by the instructor and to demonstrate a level of performance on specific goals and objectives. The classroom is instructor-centered, but that doesn't mean it can't be fun. Behavior is modified and conditioned by the instructor through rewards or punishment to attain the desired learning outcomes. According to behaviorists, the types of reinforcement are a critical component to learning because individual learners respond to different reinforcement based on their personal motivations. So for instance, if the learner is motivated by good grades, a good reinforcement is the use of grades. Poor grades are a negative reinforcement, which provides motivation for the learner to put in more effort to receive a better grade. According to the behaviorist view of learning, objectives should be developed that focus on the level of learning desired as well as the type of task. The role of the instructor is to provide learners with information about the appropriateness of behavior through frequent feedback. And this feedback will either reinforce their behavior or determine the consequences in the form of corrective actions required for the learner to achieve the desired outcome. Learning that re involves recalling facts, defining concepts and explanations, or performing procedures are most often readily taught by behaviorist learning strategies which focus on the attainment of specific goals or the performance of physical skills. Behaviorists often focus on drill and practice activities and by identifying small incremental tasks or sub-skills that the learner needs to acquire, design specific objectives that would lead to the achievement of these goals. Next up is cognitivism. According to cognitivism, knowledge is still considered to exist outside of the person. However, this learning theory's focus is on understanding how human memory works to acquire knowledge and promote learning. The focus is on how learners acquire specific types of strategies for learning, including planning, monitoring, and evaluating, and the influence of prior knowledge, beliefs, attitudes, and values on learning. This theory developed a clearer understanding of how information is processed and stored, as well as how prior knowledge is stored in memory structures called schema for retrieval in the appropriate context. 
According to cognitivism, the transfer of knowledge to new situations is influenced by the way information is presented and the relevance of information presented. If information is presented poorly or too much irrelevant information is associated with relevant information, it may be difficult for the learner to sort and organize the information. This, in turn, can have an impact on the storage, retrieval, and transfer of information. So this is really critical for adult learners who have specific professional needs that require them to be able to transfer knowledge to real-world applications in their professional environments. Robert Gagné proposed nine events of learning that correspond with specific cognitive processes. Madison College uses various versions of these uh, learning events, this whole series, to structure and scaffold learning in a variety of learning formats, such as accelerated and active learning. Gagné propo proposed that these nine events provide the conditions of learning which define the intellectual skills to be learned as well as the sequence of instruction. He believed lessons should be organized according to these events so learners could associate new knowledge with existing structures. He also thought it could provide an appropriate level of scaffolding to support learning. Learners play an active role in learning by actively organizing information for successful processing into long-term memory for later recall. The instructor continues to determine learning outcomes and direct the learning with the additional application of specific information processing strategies to assist the learner in acquiring knowledge. To facilitate learning, the learning environment should be arranged to maximize learner's ability to retrieve prior knowledge relevant to the learning outcomes and organize the content to maximize information processing. If information is presented poorly or too much irrelevant information is associated with relevant information, it may be difficult for the learner to sort and organize the information. This in turn can have an impact on storage, retrieval, and transfer. Scaffolding is critical to adult learners who have specific professional needs that require them to be able to transfer knowledge to real-world applications in their professional environments. Instructors play a role in scaffolding the learning environment by monitoring learning and providing instructional support. Learning outcomes that are focused on complex, higher levels of learning, such as problem solving, are best explained by cognitivism because the focus is on breaking down complex problems into component parts and relating the content to be learned with prior knowledge to build higher levels of understanding. Instructional strategies consider the organization of content for learning, including the use of advanced organizers like blank outline notes for lectures or reading, and Gagné's nine events of instruction. Next up is constructivism. Constructivism describes learning as a process where learners socially construct knowledge and meaning. According to this theory, knowledge does not exist outside of the person, but is constructed based on how a person interacts with the environment and experiences the real world. There are two types of constructivism, cognitive constructivism and social constructivism. Cognitive constructivism focuses on individual characteristics or attributes of the learner and their impact on learning. Social constructivism focuses on meaning, uh, how meaning and understanding are created through social interactions. Together, they view learning as the construction of knowledge and meaning as the interpretation of incoming information through an individual's unique lens that continues, that includes their personality, beliefs, cultures, and experiences. From the constructivist perspective, learners are not merely passive receivers of knowledge, but active participants in the learning process and construct knowledge socially with peers. Instructors who base their pedagogy on constructivism take on the new role of facilitator rather than sage on the stage by actively observing and assessing the current state of individual learners and providing learning strategies to help individuals interpret and understand the content. Instructors provide relevant real-world context to help learners understand the relevance of the learning goals for them personally. The instructor will support learning by providing scaffolding to support learners in their zone of proximal development. This requires the instructor to develop skills at assessing the current state of learners and to adapt the learning experience to support their attainment of goals. In the constructivist approach, learning is context-specific and emphasizes the whole rather than the components or individual skills. 
Rather than focusing on small skills and building up to a larger job, constructivists present a complex situation and let the learners figure out where to start based on their current knowledge, preferences, and motivations. Instruction should, should situate the learning in authentic tasks that allow learners to understand why it is important to learn, as well as its relevance to them personally or professionally. Meaningful contexts allow the learning to be transferred to novel situations when students move into the real world. The use of active learning strategies support learning using real world examples or opportunities to solve real world problems, allowing for the greatest opportunity for transfer of knowledge. Critical thinking strategies help learners develop their skills at thinking through problems and issues. Self-reflection and self-assessments help learners continuously improve their learning by actively reflecting on the processes they use as they engage in the learning activities. Okay, the latest major learning theory comes from the rise of on learning, uh, online learning itself and is quite recent. Connectivism is a form of experiential learning which prioritizes the set of connections formed by actions and experience over the idea that knowledge is propositional. It questions that there is any such thing as knowledge at all. Instead, knowledge is just the connections we have access to. Crowdsourcing is cr closely related to connectivism. The idea that we are all together smarter than any one person is the basis for almost all networked learning. In 2004, the first massive open online course, or MOOC, was launched, which quickly led to courses with thousands of students enrolled from major Ivy League institutions. In connectivism, the more people are connected, the smarter we all are. However, because traditional assessment methods are largely absent from these courses, the only assessment method that can be used is self-assessment. This type of learning is obviously not suitable for most degree-seeking students at Madison College who need credentials to enter professional fields. However, our continuing education division is currently developing a relationship with this theory and are awarding Mozilla badges for completing professional development activities. Students who are already working in their fields will take self-paced open enrollment learning modules to develop a portfolio of documentation. They then pay a small fee, equivalent to continuing ed tuition, to earn a badge. The documentation is then stored online for employers and others to review themselves. From the connectivist perspective, learners should choose courses and information tailored to their own goals and abilities. Instructors of connectivist classrooms do not have direct relationship with individuals of any depth. Instead, they create information ahead of time and students engage with it or not as the students wish to. The instructor still supports learning by providing scaffolding to support the learners to make connections with other students and with resources in the virtual world. Like constructivism, self-reflection and self-assessments help learners continuously improve their learning by actively reflecting on the processes they use as they engage in learning activities. The difference here is that there are no instructor-controlled assessments at all. The only assessments available during the course are peer review and computer feedback. During the course, the instructor does not provide individual guidance, but is merely another participant. Instructors are mainly responsible for technical issues and wrangling behavior. The success or failure of the course largely depends on the mix of students who show up and participate. So to close, I'd like you to take a moment to think about your content area and decide which of these major approaches you think will be most helpful in teaching your course's content. I do hope you have enjoyed this presentation. If you're interested in learning more about these theories, you can check out the books that are avail available to you in the CETA library, which will help you learn more about these individual topics.